Hi everyone, so this is going to be an example of a surface integral over a vector field. So in the last video we talked about orientation and the video before that was actually the formula for doing this. So uh, first let's just read the problem that we'll remind ourselves of the formula, talk a little about the orientation of this surface, and then move forward to actually compute this. So it's asking us to evaluate a surface integral um, over s of f dot ds. Okay, so now f is given, f here is 3x 2z 1 minus y squared. So these are our functions for the uh, quote unquote x, y, and z coordinates of our vectors, of the vectors that are output by f. Okay, so uh, and s is given to be the portion of this surface. So whatever that surface is, you could do some z level sets to find out what it is. It doesn't really matter what this surface is, um, but you can maybe think of how you would parameterize this right now since we have it solved for z in terms of x and y. Okay, and we want the, the portion of this that lies above this triangle. So here I'm giving you that the triangle is bounded by this function y equals minus 2x. If you were given this problem maybe on a quiz or a test, it would be likely that they actually didn't give you this picture. They would just say the triangle with vertices uh, 0, 0, 2, 0, and 2 minus 4. You'd have to come up with this picture on your own. Of course, that isn't, very isn't a very tough problem. I trust everybody can do that. So we're just going to start with the tri triangle given here to make the video a little shorter. So this triangle is in the xy plane. Okay, so and then we want it to be oriented in the negative z direction. So let's just go back to the formula. So this was the formula we had. We have to compute f of v of u v and then dot it with our normal vector. So the first step, of course, is going to be finding that parameterization u v. And then we want to differentiate, get our tangent vectors, compute the dot product, and then we'll actually uh, compute the integral. Of course, step four here, the bounds for u of v in d, well, d is given to us. This here, the triangle that we're integrating above, right, we're looking at the portion of s that lies above this triangle. So this is d if we parameterize with x and y, which I think it makes the most sense to parameterize in x with with x and y here because z is already given in terms of x and y. So uh, I guess I kind of gave away that first part to this. But uh, here I have a picture of the surface. Again, it doesn't really matter what this surface looks like for this particular problem. But uh, why don't you go ahead and pause the video here and try to come up with a parameterization for the surface. Okay, so now that you're unpaused, I think it makes the most sense here to parameterize, like I said, in terms of x and y. So what I'm going to do is let x be u and y be v. And since we already have z as an equation in x and u, we get z is just 2 minus 3v plus u squared. Okay. And actually, we're not going to worry about this part, the orientation, right? It says we want it to be oriented in the negative z direction. But we're really not going to worry about that at all when we set up our parameterization. Because like we talked about in the last video, all 
having the opposite orientation will do is multiply by a negative one. So we start with whatever parameterization we want. And then when we compute the normal vector, we just check, is it in the negative z direction? Okay, then we're gonna get the right answer. Well, if we compute our normal vector, it's actually in the positive z direction, that means all we have to do is multiply our answer by minus one in the end, and then it'll be correct. So again, we don't really have to worry about this orientation part, except when we actually get to our normal vector. So coming up with the parameterization, you, again, you could come up with whatever parameterization you want here. Okay, so right here, uh, now that we have the parameterization, let's just write it V of UV is U, v 2 minus 3v plus u squared. Okay, so then we can compute f of phi of u of v. This is the other part of step one that I had. Uh, so f again was 3x 2z 1 minus y squared. So with our parameterization this turns out to be 3u 2 times this Thing for z that we have, 2 minus 3v plus u squared. And then 1 minus y squared just becomes 1 minus v squared. So let's simplify this a little bit just by multiplying out that 2. So this is 4 minus 6v <laughs> plus 2u squared. Okay, now the next step here is just to compute our tangent vectors. So let's keep that V of U V on the screen. Step two, T U and T V. So why don't you, this should be a pretty easy calculation, but why don't you just pause quick here and compute these on your own and then also compute the cross product. because we will need that, of course, uh, to find our integrand. Okay, so now that you've unpaused, right, so you should have got T of U is one, zero, two U. And T of V, of course, is zero, one, minus three. So now I like to conveniently write my tangent vectors above each other uh, when I'm actually computing it. So then uh, when I'm actually, since I have to do the cross product next, instead of actually writing out of that matrix and computing its determinant, well, if you write them uh, vertically like this, then it's kind of already set up so you can take your determinant, right? So you uh, writing them vertically like this, you see, the first component is zero times minus three minus two u. So we get minus two u. Two u times zero minus a negative three gives us three here. And then we have one times one minus zero. So this is what you should have got for the normal vector if you use the same parameterization of me as me in the first part. So now let's look back at the beginning it asks for, right, this is where the orientation matters because we just computed the normal vector. We want it to be oriented in the negative z direction. Okay, so is our parameterization the negative z direction? Dang, it's actually not, right? Because we have a positive z here. And right? so this is in the positive z direction. if we project it right onto the z-axis. So this is the opposite of the orientation that the question asked for. That just means we multiply our integral by minus one. We don't have to start over, come up with a new parameterization with a new normal vector. That's just gonna waste time. We already have this theorem that says, having the opposite orientation just multiplies by minus one. 
So we'll just keep that in mind. So the next step is just computing f of phi u b dotted with our normal vector t u cross t v. So uh, and that takes a little bit of simplification, uh, but right, I trust you all can do this dot product. After simplifying, you should get 13 minus 18v minus v squared. Right, so that's just computing the dot product. We have this minus 2 th u 3 1, and then the f of v of u was right up here. 3u, 4 minus 6v plus 2u squared, and 1 minus v squared. So you multiply those out, simplify it, and you should get 13 minus 18v minus v squared. Okay. Now step four is coming up with the bounds for the integration. So let's bring back that triangle here because that is going to be important. Uh, right, so again, we have x is u and y is v. So y equals minus 2x just becomes v equals minus 2u. And right, this is at v equals minus 4. And so this is 2 minus 4. Okay. So uh, this should be well known by now. How do we find out, find these bounds of integration for a triangle? Uh, this has been on an exam already. So you should know. Why don't you just pause here quick and find the bounds just to make sure you got it right. So now that you've unpaused the bounds for u and v here, well, I guess it depends on what order of integration you want to do, right? So let's say uh, we want to do dv du, then v of course goes from minus 2u to 0. And u goes from 0 to 2. If we wanted to integrate this du dv, so maybe when you paused, you did the alternate order, then u would go from minus half v to 2. And v is going to go from minus 4 to 0. OK. So last thing, we just have to put this all together. So we want the surface integral of f dot ds. Well, copying down the formula, this is the integral over d of f of phi of uv dotted with tu cross tv. And we conveniently came up with steps so that all these things are already computed. So we can set up the integral now. Uh, let's say we want to integrate it du dv. Then what you get here is v is from minus 4 to 0 u is from minus one half v to two. And that dot product we already computed was 13 minus 18 v minus v squared. But I'm forgetting something here. Why don't you uh, Pause for a second, make sure you know what I'm forgetting here. 
Okay, now that you're unpaused, the one thing I forgot, so this is the note that we made earlier in red. The normal vector here is the opposite of the actual orientation that I wanted. So I have to multiply my integral by minus one. So what we really want here is the negative of this double integral. Okay, and I trust that you guys know how to do double integrals over a rectangle by now. Of course, this is just, the integrand is just a polynomial. What you should get here is negative 412 over three. And if you don't, you know, maybe let me know. So if you have any questions about this, make sure to shoot me an email. Um, but that is our example of a surface integral of a vector field.